Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm going to talk to you about the oscillator options for your Atmel AVR Atmega 328P. This is the AVR most commonly found in the Arduino board. So in the Arduino, you see here is the Atmega 328, and here is a quartz crystal. This is a 49S package. It's a through-hole crystal. You can also get it as a, just a 4.9 which is about three times as tall and you can also get it as all sorts of surface mount packages but so what this is, this is a quartz crystal that's very f finely cut so that it happens to oscillate at 16 megahertz of course inside of the AVR there is a second oscillator option is it actually internally has an RC oscillator so this is just a resistor and a capacitor and it, that happens to oscillate there's a reason that we don't use that though. The internal oscillator doesn't happen to be so good. And since I have an HP 5328A frequency counter with a oven disciplined oscillator in it, I can actually show you how bad it is. So what I've done is I've taken a GPS receiver. This happens to be the, one of the nice ones from Adafruit. I've taken the one pulse per second pin off of it and I've checked that against my frequency counter. My frequency counter said that these one pulse per second pulses were coming out at anywhere between one second and 0.9999999 seconds apart. Which, assuming that the government got their 31 cesium fountains to be the right time, which they did, uh, kind of by definition, that means that my frequency counter is essentially reading frequencies correctly. So, now what we have here is this is my AVR target board. I've got a USB Tiny so that we can reburn the fuses in it. And then I've got a test lead connected to pin port B0 or pin 14 because one of the fuse options for the Atmega is you can actually ask it to output its oscillator on that pin. So we're then monitoring this pin, feeding it into the frequency counter, and we'll be able to see exactly what the frequency is. So, right now, I've got this Atmega burned with the fuse setting so that it outputs its oscillator and it actually uses its internal oscillator. So, inside of the Atmega is a 8 megahertz oscillator that is originally divided by 8 down to 1 megahertz, but I turned that off. So, we should, when I turn this on, see 8 megahertz. And profoundly, we see not 8 megahertz. So you can see that it is 7.84764, well, yeah. So 7,000 7, kilohertz, 7,800 7, kilohertz. So this is about 200 kilohertz slow, or about 150 kilohertz slow from the 8 megahertz. I want you to also appreciate how much is jumping around is this oscillator is changing frequency by a couple kilohertz which is you know about 0.1% this is this seems kind of surprising but if you actually go read the data sheet the data sheet actually specifies that the original frequency tolerance from the, from the fab is actually 10% so they're really only saying that it is within 10% of 8 megahertz so it can be up to 800 kilohertz off either up or low. So the fact that it's only 150, that's pretty good. They say that you can also change that. You can actually calibrate it. So looking at the Atmega data sheet, this is page 346. On the top here, this is actually a graph of the oscillator frequency as a function of temperature. So even if it happens to be correct at 30 degrees Celsius and at 3.3 volts is that right there is 8 megahertz if the temperature changes by 10 degrees it drops 200 kilohertz or well, let's see, 20 20 kilohertz right so you can see just sitting here in the ambient ambient air as this chip gets warmer and cooler because there's you know air flowing around it you can see the oscillator is changing from anywhere from about one to three or four kilohertz per second. So this is very unstable. If we warm it up, you might be able to see it going up. 
yeah so you can see it, it's going up when we're warming it up take my hand off of it and hopefully eventually it'll start cooling down again yeah look at that so that's no good and you're and you may be saying well what if it's just a bad chip here's another chip so let's take this one out of my handy dandy ziff socket put the new one in without killing it close it gasp it's off too but in the other direction so this is kind of unfortunate uh, but for many applications this actually works fairly well um, because if you just need the microcontroller to run it's running at 8 and something megahertz and that's pretty good but if you're trying to use this to keep time by the end of the day you'll be off by about an hour or two which is unfortunate uh, because most people expect their clocks to do better than an hour or two so we can instead switch to this quartz crystal in, uh, which I have soldered down there so we can ask the at Mega, don't use it, your internal oscillator, but actually use this external oscillator, and we'll see how much better the quartz crystal is. So, from the command line on my laptop, we ask it, please use this internal oscillator, external oscillator. So I've reburnt the fuse on here, and now you can see it is 15. 999 kilohertz and 852, 53, 52, 53 hertz. So this should be saying 16, 000, 000, 000, and you can see it's very close. We're only off by about 150 hertz, so that's only about a, that's about a low buzz. It's kind of like, hmm, right? So uh, at 16 megahertz, that's darn good, but it's not perfect, so why not? Looking at the data sheet for a random quartz crystal on DigiKey, since uh, I got this one off eBay and I have no idea where it came from, uh, these are one page data sheets, real easy to read. Uh, the second line it says frequency tolerance at 25 degrees Celsius, plus or minus 30 parts per million. A part per million is like a percent, but a, where a percent is per 1000, so 100% is one per million, part per million is per million, and so a million is one. So 30 parts per million is the fraction 0. 0. 0.00003. At 16 megahertz, 30 parts per million is 460 or 480 hertz. We are within 400 hertz since we're only 150 hertz off. So this is within spec. Also looking at this, frequency stability referenced to 25 degrees Celsius from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius, which is kind of your typical range for electronics because negative 10 degrees Celsius is a fairly cool, cold freezer and 70 degrees Celsius is uh, pretty dang hot. 50 parts per million. So that's saying that between negative 10 degrees and 70 degrees Celsius, it's only going to change from whatever frequency it is by 50, by 50 parts per million, which again, 50 parts per million is 0. 0.00005 times 16 million, which ends up being, you know, about 600 hertz. I can show you just kind of a demonstration of this by using my fat finger, because my finger happens to be alive. So, we can see it's kind of been switching between 852, 853, and 851. If we warm it up, we might be able to get it to drift a few degrees. So you can see it actually goes down in, in frequency, and that's actually very, very common for crystals to go down in frequency when you warm them up versus going up, which is what we saw with the RC oscillator. So. What does this mean? Uh, this means that the RC oscillators inside of the Atmega are very good at running the Atmega, but they're very, very bad at keeping any sort of time. That's why you will often see people selling the real-time clock modules with the 32 kilohertz crystals in them, 
as an add-on to your Arduino because even the 16 megahertz crystal in there isn't that great. Is you can actually get very uh, you can get rather better timekeeping mechanisms using these external real-time clock. And you'll notice that as this crystal has returned to room temperature, it's kind of gone back towards the 850, 851 region that we saw it start up at. So, this is why the Arduino really needs a crystal for the serial port, because a serial port is a very time-sensitive application. We switch back to this Atmega that doesn't use the external oscillator and you can see it jump by it jumping around that much the actual width of the bits that it sends over a serial port is going to change and that's important so this is why the Arduino has a crystal and this is why clocks have to use a crystal and they can't just use the internal oscillator by logging in by programming your Arduino with a frequency counter or something else um, you can change the OzCal register is there's this register that you can actually adjust this frequency and calibrate it so you can get this number to be closer to 8 megahertz if you need it but appreciate even if you get the calibration better the stability is still terrible so the RC oscillator is decent but again doesn't meet a lot of the timing requirements for the Arduino which is why you really need to have either a quartz crystal or a ceramic oscillator, which is kind of a middle ground between the two. It's why you need them in your Arduino. So this has been Kenneth showing you the difference between the internal and external oscillator options on the At At Mega 328. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, sound off in the comments.